Hi, my name is Josh Westhouse. We're Computer Science 330. Uh, we are doing implementation A. As you can see, I'm actually operating on the VM here, so I'm doing a screen automatic capture. So let's get that back to the spot. Uh, as we said, the first thing we have to do is create an ingredient class that includes attributes for ID, name, unit, cows per unit, protein, and carbs per unit. Uh, and then each of the X per unit properties must be a positive int. So as you can see, here's the names of the private instance variables. Uh, I do have the default constructor that just does nothing for it just to have it. And then this is the one we mainly use, where it does all the attributes and it does all the parameter values. Uh, how I got around the making sure it's a positive int, so I created a method called int down here at the bottom. So all it does is it checks the value and the type, the value to make sure if, the pos if it's less than zero, and it will prompt for a positive value for what type. The reason I put the type in here, as you can see, so I can reuse a single method for all three of them. So one will be cows, one will be protein, one will be carbs. So basically it'll ask you, uh, please enter a positive value for carbs or protein or uh, calories or something like that. And then just reads it in and returns it back up here. So no matter what, whenever you use this, you're going to get a positive number to put in there. Uh, the same thing with the name in. Uh, to solve the problem, to make sure that it's a string of length 1 to 100, I did the same thing, created a private method called check the name, checks the string, and then what it does is as long as the temp.length is less than 1 or greater than 100, it'll do the same thing, please prompt, and then it'll ask you to go in for the next thing, and then it returns it, so it's always going to ask for that. Uh, in my tester class is where we'll actually test that. And then recipe, we had to do a recipe class that includes attributes I name, cook time, and ingredients. I name, cook time, and ingredients. Uh, the map of the ingredients and the amounts include the following methods constructor, which take inputs for ID, name, cook time. That's ID, name, and cook time. Uh, add ingredient and print ingredients. Uh, that's add ingredient is right here. And then print ingredient is right here. Uh, this is the, the reason you have all this add other stuff in here is because you have to multiply the ingredient that you want by the amount. So say you're doing, say the recipe calls for two eggs, right? And you say, well, I want, you know, two times this recipe, so you're going to need four eggs. So is that how that works? And then I did a, another method on my own just to print all the ingredients using the two string implemented in the ingredient class down here at the bottom. And this format is the same format that I use for this right here, so it looks similar just with the extra stuff in there. But I did this so you can see what the entire ingredients you need for your recipe are. And then I have the getter and the setters for all the stuff that you need. And as we go through my tester class, uh, here's my tester class. What I do is I create the recipe, uh, create ingredients, create them as you can see, recipe number, ingredient number one, two, three, and four, flour, egg, sugar, chocolate. Uh, you know, flour eats a cup, egg has each, and sugar is a tablespoon. I know these are accurate. I actually looked them up. And then as it creates the ingredients and then it adds the ingredients to the recipe and then it tests displays all of them all I do is just go quick tactical pause so to kind of explain how it goes to make sure i'm doing okay and then i do an error check where the ingredient the only extract i'm giving it a null value for the name and i'm giving it a negative number for the calories and then i add it in there and then i test just the one by itself and then i print all the ingredients so you can kind of compare so let's run it and see how it goes Go down there, let's scroll all the way up here. So ingredients for the cookies, as you can see, it all matches what we've put in so far. Amount 3.5, the amount 2.0, amount 3.0, amount 1.0. As you can see, it's a double. You have flour, egg, sugar, chocolate. You got flour, egg, sugar, chocolate. And it kind of matches as you go. So as we do the next part, let's get going here. And you have to put something in here, and I'll put test continue. So please have the name of the name character. So what did I mess up? All right, let's go back and see what I was trying to put in here. I believe it was vanilla in extract. So let's scroll down a little bit. So yeah, vanilla extract. So I need to put vanilla extract. So I'll just put vanilla. And then positive values, go put the negative. So we're going to say it's like 60 calories. So then what it did, so as you can see, vanilla. Uh, calorie 60, it changed those, made sure it was at least those, and made sure it put it in. And as you can see, the ingredient by itself, so if it's 1.5, this is what I did for this, I wanted uh, 1.5, the uh, recipe. So as you can see, is 90 calories, it was 60 calories, and then it became 90 calories. Same thing with protein was 7, now it's 10.5. Carbs was 106, now it's 159.9, and the amount is 1.5, the recipe. So as you can see, it checks everything, and it goes through all the implementations, and it should do all the stuff that we need it to do. 
So it does the demo program, creates specialty multiple ingredients, and shows results of each recipe method call. Include test plan and a unit class for add ingredient or set cows per unit. I did the add ingredient. So that's the one main one that I did. Uh, this has been Josh Westerhouse as part of the 3 SCI 330 exam. Not exam, but implementation A.